don't know where it's gone. Oh yes, it's there. <laughs> it's right there. What the fucking chances are that? Right then. My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're talking about these little suckers. So this is a turbo, we're going to use this. Uh, I can't remember who fucking built this. This is a Garrett one. Says it all over it, you twat. Um, so this is a little baby Garrett turbo. Uh, quite a small little diddy bastard. And on this, it has... Uh, oil. This is it, this is just oil, is this one. Wastegate oil so you have a feed pipe in there and the outlet is in on the other side yeah that's right um, so you can see that big pipe there this one oh and then the outlet is on the other side there and you'll notice on this one that that pipe is on this side so it's on the impeller side why is that there well obviously you have bear bearings in there uh, a lot of turbos use plain bearings, so they float on oil. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And someone asked a question, and the question was, I need your opinion, cooling and turbos, oil or water, what is best for thermal efficiency? Good question. So... It depends what you mean by thermal efficiency. So we have a impeller side like this and then a shaft in between it and then we'll have a turbine side. And as you can see, that's beautifully drawn to accuracy. <laughs> and then basically you have bearings and you have bearings and you try and space your bearings as far apart as possible. Um, this is just uh, angle of incidence and how much shafts can deflect and stuff like that. You know, it's like having legs on a table kind of thing. But regardless, uh, these need oil. You know what I mean? And some turbos also have a water jacket. So water floods in here, pisses back out of here, taking waste heat with it. Now you might be going, well hang about, turbos work on heat and so, and so on and so on. In that example I just showed you, we have an oil feed that comes in like this. Now that will basically lubricate the entire shaft. Now which one is better? Because um, we, know, <laughs> we know that water is the best coolant, no matter what Evans fucking says, or Del Bollocks. Uh, water is the best coolant, you know and we've got water and oil in here and if you mix water and oil together you get the super slipperiness of both and the coolant of the other so all is good but obviously this is a heat system on this end that's a heat system on that end so what is best for um the thermal efficiency of this turbo well it, like i say it depends what you mean because on this side we want it to be cold now if you pump gases through an impeller like this, the T1 here and T2, T2 will be higher. So why is that higher? Well, at the end of the day, what we're doing is, is the air that's happily just flowing in there has been batted by this impeller blade. And that's what basically transfers the momentum. Basically, that hurries the air up. And this is the whole point. If you want to fill a bucket and you've got a hose pipe just sat there like that, it's going to take X amount of seconds to fill it. If you've got a bigger fucking hose pipe or more hose pipes, stuff like that, that's mass flow rates. Now, we can't increase the real size of this on the stand, you know, as a system uh, without making it just physically bigger. But basically, what you do is you add energy in by spinning a blade and it's batting it. And that basically means that per second we can shove more air in. You know what I mean? If you could hurry, increase the pressure of that hose and basically piss out more air, uh, water per second, you'd fill your bucket really quickly. Now, this is the thing with port velocities and stuff that people get confused with. If you put your thumb over the end of it, the velocity increases. But the thing is, your hose pipe 
it is the mass flow rate it's like a balancing act between velocities and how much you can actually shove through that pipe so in other words when you put your thumb over the end if you've got a hose pipe that's just trickling out this much normally when you blank off half of it with your thumb yes you are increasing the velocity however you're reducing the amount of basically the surface area that's passing through and basically what you're doing is you're not increasing really anything you're just increasing increasing the velocity <coughs> what we're doing here is increasing the velocity we're adding energy into the system if you just have a hose pipe what you're using is you're just using the pressure of the system the pressure of the system and in a sense that's the energy of the flow um, if you then change locally the velocity well then the pressure drops here and the velocity increases but you're basically not getting energy for free anywhere because you're losing pressure and gaining velocity or you can lose velocity and gain pressure regardless it's um, inversely proportional so as one goes up the other one goes down and the sum of all basically equals the same thing so why, where forgetting this you, T1 going in and T2 coming out this is an increase this is hotter and where is that coming from? Well, that's literally from the energy from the blades. The, the, you know, the blades are spinning around and every time they collide into air, they transfer their momentum to the air. And that basically causes this to slow down. So if you have a momentum increase, and momentum's not with an M, but we'll just go with it for simplicity. We've got M1, sorry, there, and you've got M2 coming out um, like that. Or just this, you <coughs> velocity. Um, Basically, this starts to lose. This starts to lose momentum. It starts to drop, and that's what we call the load on the system. This is why it requires power. This is why when you stick an electric motor on it, yeah, you can make it freewheel and spin really fast. But as soon as you're start starting to pump air into an enclosed volume, which is what you're doing until your valve opens. When your valve is closed, you are pumping air into that basically into your manifold into that volume and then the load starts to go up as the pressure in the manifold increases and you require uh, energy you require power to do that energy over time basically and that's where it comes from it comes to the impeller side so if we blast this with loads of heat like this and the momentum of that air is quite high <coughs> this is what happens the momentum of your air uh, of your exhaust gases blasting that turbine blade are converted from the momentum into it's, uh, it's a momentum transfer it's basically just the opposite this is why they look similarish you know it's basically one is you blow and the other one is the one that's sucking if i dare say that it's basically blowing it outwards into the system so your momentum as your air comes out is lower it's dropped quite a lot and this is to, this is directly proportional to the temperature of the gases so if this uh so obviously cooling this then seems like a problem but it's not because it's after the fact you see in a sense what we've got here is that um your momentum here or just your velocity or your speed of your exhaust flow is um a function of the temperature right so the temperature drops when she's already in here. It's already done its job in a sense. In a sense, a cooling system here isn't cooling the exhaust gases that are flying down that exhaust. It's only when that they hit this impeller uh, turbine and start to turn it, then the cooling happens and stuff like that. So for survivability, we need to cool this thing. Otherwise, it'll get too hot. The oil will fucking burn, and then it'll just grind itself to pieces because the oil's just turned into shit. Um, so in a sense we were cooling after the fact so that's not really a problem and you might say yeah well but there's another exhaust pulse and another exhaust pulse and another exhaust pulse yes but this the uh, momentum that this flow has your exhaust flow flying through due to its temperature is um it, it's still after the fact you're still cooling here now obviously you're going to cool this down you're going to cool this down into its operational um, you know into its operational temperatures basically if you just left it it would slowly start to cook and die and that's what happens when these oil and cooling systems fail especially if you've got a water cooled system that requires a water cooled system if this dies then everything just starts to get hot generally your oil system goes before your actual uh, turbine goes but you can you know cook a turbine wheel <coughs> but you've got to remember it's not um, 
you can heat up this gas and it, it just off off it goes it's just flying down your exhaust pipe and this gas is in no way connected to this system until it bats into now it does hit the pipe work you know what i mean if it's cooler it will dump a bit of heat stuff like that but one of the main concerns there is that the exhaust pipes have been blasted by the air um, because you're racing along and again that's why a lot of times they put ceramic coatings as insulators and they wrap them and stuff like that there's that uh, new Aston Martin engine that new V12 if you look at the manifold on that they have uh, a wrap on that it's very minor and stuff like that um, but again that can aid in scavenging because they can basically keep the exhaust gas velocities up now people might say oh that's because of under bonnet stuff dickhead it's on a dyno that's probably never going to go into a car that's a test engine and they've still stuck it on there and we'll go into that engine regardless um so you know you're cooling this system so why do we have on that particular turbo why do we have the oil system towards the intake side well because we want to keep this cold like i say the temperature increases and the temperature increases because we're adding energy to it and temperature energy same fucking thing so when we're increasing the velocity of this air and then when we start to cram it when we start to cram it in there that's all about energy densities and stuff like that but everything basically starts to get hotter usually you lose you put an intercooler in here you know to reduce um this temperature you know so we can strip some more temperature uh, some or more energy out of it so we can then basically have higher densities if you have an intercooler what it does is it, the reason why you can have higher boosts is because this doesn't have to push as hard because in a sense you've got this much air and as it cools it packs up into this much space so you've got this extra space to then add more in and that's what it's all about we'll talk about intercoolers and motorbikes and stuff like someone did send me a picture um but we want the coolant here, we want the oil here, because as it comes from the engine, uh, as it's pumped there, uh, generally it's been cooled and stuff like that, or it's dumped a lot of heat to the aluminium in the actual engine, all the castings and stuff like that, all your casement and all that stuff. So then it comes down here, and we want to cool here. In a sense, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make the iron curtain of cooling. You know what I mean? We don't want any heat to pass across here, because that this thing already adds heat to the incoming flow due to the energy transfer we don't want additional sneaky uh, temperatures coming in now obviously you know you reach an equilibrium it's always going to heat it up to a certain degree you know we can't just make this uh, vacuum gap where you know it's all about radiation or not conduction and convection but with you know you try your best you try and put it on this side so this gets cool first um, initially so it's kind of like I say it's kind of like a stop heating shit up from beyond this point you know what I mean it's like a moat around this system that fucking plane oh Jesus any road so which is best water or oil cooling well you want to kind of it depends um, we usually have a, the, the, le the level of adequacy so if you can get away with just having oil cooling and you run the system and you thrash the system and the thing hasn't overheated the oil hasn't cooked and died then you'll go that's good enough because it's less parts less complexity and it's cheaper if you then run turbos and it's like a Veyron or something crazy like that or whatever massive amounts of power massive amounts of waste heat if you start running stuff like that then you're going to start cooking your um, turbine turbine shaft your bearings and everything you're going to cook everything so excuse me what you can do to that end is then you say right we're going to add a water system now generally they don't run these things until they cook they'll do a thermal a thermal analysis on something like solidworks or something similar where you can basically look at the heat flux the heat power the, the convection you can look at all these things heat transfer stuff like that um creep that's another one um thermal fatigue stuff like that so you can basically use these uh, software packages to basically give you a good idea and that'll give you ballpark numbers whoa that's way too hot we're gonna have to water cool this so which is the best if you haven't done all this analysis and all this hit what if you are buying one off the shelf what should you go for um if you buy a turbine system that runs as cool as possible then it's more likely to last a lot longer you know what I mean? When we start getting into really hot temperatures inside the turbo housing and stuff like that, feel uh, bearings and seals start to fail, stuff like that. You know, and when you start blowing blue smoke out of your exhaust, 
you've probably got a leaky oil seal and you know it's just all bad hope that makes sense and obviously if you have a diesel you're gonna get a bit of, oh, you're gonna get some runaway hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit